Now, last video, I did a bit of a comparison of um, lithium batteries to lead acid batteries and why I prefer lithium for uh, at least for uh, portable use, summits on the air, that sort of thing. And um, I want to go into a bit more detail today about building it. So what you need to be aware of, what you need to uh, think of before you start building your batteries. Now, um, lithium batteries have a bit of a bad reputation for catching fire. Um, if you're careful with them, they're they're okay. Now, I don't profess to be a um, expert here. I'm not. I'm showing you how I do it and how I perceive to be safe. So it's up to you to do your own research. And uh, if you set fire to yourself after watching some bloke on YouTube, then uh, sorry, that's on you. Now, here's so here's what I do, and here's what you need to decide. The biggest problem you're going to have with this is. Um, matching the voltages um, and I'll show you what I mean because you can either have a three cell um, a, array three batteries in series or four batteries in series and whatever way you look at it the voltages don't quite match up and let me demonstrate what I mean by that on um, my uh, FT857 and if I switch you on to the other camera so this is the user manual. In fact, I can, if I press that button, there you go, you can have me in the bottom corner. So if I show you my user manual for the FT857, um, let me demonstrate what I mean. What you're looking for is, um, if I can hold that up so you can see it on the camera, this bit here, supply voltage, okay? Um, this tells you what the voltage requirements are, what power you need to supply. So. 13.8 volts DC plus or minus 15%. So if we do the maths on that, and I'm going to use a calculator because uh, like I said before, I failed my maths exam. So we need 13.8 volt multiplied by now minus 15%. So 0.85 gives us, um, 11.73 so I've made a note of that over here 11.73 is our minimum voltage so get rid of that and maximum voltage so that's 11.73 is minus 15 percent and if I do 13.8 times 1.15 that will give us plus 15 percent and that's 15.87 uh, so that is the voltage that our radio is looking for. We're looking for between 11.73 and 15.87 volts, okay? Now, remember that. So, let's get rid of that calculator. So that is the voltage we need to achieve in order to power our radio. Let's go onto this screen. So get my screen capture up. If you remember this from the previous slide, this is the um, discharge voltage curve of a single cell lithium ion battery. Now it shows maximum charge here for about 4.3. I, I don't take it up that far. It's, uh, I'm led to believe it's not good for the batteries to go that far out. I take mine up to 4.2 volts. So um, on maximum charge, when the battery's fully charged, you're at 4.2 volts. Some people will say go down to 3.2 volts, but again, I don't like over discharging my battery. So I only take them down to about 3.7 volts, 3.75 volts, something like that. So let's work within this band here, sort of uh, 4.2 down to 3.7. That's, that's the uh, band I normally work in with my batteries. So if we take a three cell, battery first you have a maximum of 4.2 volts and times by three cells in a series it gives you 12.6 volts perfectly acceptable pretty much uh, more or less slap bang in the middle of what our uh, radio is expecting but if we discharge that down so if we go down to our minimum which i said was 3.75 volts multiplied by three, that give, gives us 11.25 volts. Now the 
minimum voltage according to the specs in our um, in our manufacturers uh, specifications is 11.73 so we're about half a volt under which isn't great but I think you can probably get away with that so that's if we use three cells um, in series what if we use four so same numbers again 4.2 but this time I'm going to multiply it by four and that gives us 16.8 volt nearly 17 volts which is too much for way too much for the um, 857 the maximum according to our manufacturer's specs is 15.87 uh, and I know I actually know because I accidentally connected up a four cell battery to that yay so it it actually won't let you power it on I think there's some kind of uh, protection in there if the voltage gets too high to prevent you turning it on so I know that a four cell battery will not work on that when it's fully charged now if we go uh, 3.75 which is our lowest charge times four. So if we got four cells full, fully discharged, that's 15 volts. So that's still too low for, um, for our radio. So that gives you a bit of a choice really. You can either go with three cells and undervolt the radio slightly, which isn't great, but it's half a volt you'll you'll get away with that realistically with most radios uh, there'll be a few that probably won't like it or you can go with the other option which is uh, one of these um, these are actually pretty cheap on eBay the prob it's a voltage regulator it just holds the voltage at 12 volts now the problem with these is twofold one they're quite uh, they can introduce quite a lot of noise onto your received signal which isn't great and secondly, this one is three amps maximum. Um, you can get them, they do a six amp version as well. That's fine on the ICOM 705, which is a 10 watt radio and the, uh, my ICOM 703, I'll get away with that as well. That only draws about uh, two or three amps on, uh, on transmit at 10 watts, especially on SSB. So uh, this will survive that. But if I try and put this on the, uh, 857 and transmit uh, 50, 100 watts, even 20 watts. I'm just going to uh, melt this and burn this out into oblivion. So that's not really an option for the 857. So unless you can get a much more uh, powerful one of those. So what I tend to do is uh, work out a lower voltage and just uh, undervolt the radio slightly, which probably isn't great, but especially on the lower power sort of 20 watts maybe 50 watts you'll get away with it um, now in terms of safety I, I said the biggest reason these things catch fire is because uh, people get it wrong and overlook certain aspects um, the big thing you need to watch out for with lithium is that all of the batteries are kept at the same voltage and the way you do that it's in the way you wire it up and I'll show you how I wire them up and uh, also uh, the way you charge it as well and uh, you need um, do not connect it up to your uh, normal 12 volt car battery I I absolutely would not recommend that and um, that you can fit a B, what's called a BMS a battery monitoring system in there and then you can kind of get away with the uh, charging it up from car chargers I'd rather put it through a voltage regulator and then the BMS will look after the battery shut it off when it reaches full charge or uh, if you get too much difference in the battery uh, voltages between the cells um, I don't like I don't really like that idea so what I do is um, I use one of these these come you can get these on eBay or uh, from a model shop they use them for charging uh, model aircraft and model car batteries that sort of thing and this is actually a proper lithium battery charger it'll also do lead acid as well and several other battery chemistries you just have to make sure you select the right one but you notice uh, in the end there if you can see that on camera there's some extra plugs 
in there. Uh, that's for balance charging the battery. Now, this is um, a four cell battery. This one I've actually, uh, this is a commercially made one that I've actually bought. I didn't make this, but uh, there's your main power connector. So you plug that into your battery charger, but also you'll notice you've got another smaller connector here for, uh, that's for balance charging. So you connect that into the, uh, into your charger. And uh, what that does is it keeps all the uh, cells in this battery at the same voltage and increases the voltage on the batteries at the, or, or on the cells at the same rate. So it keeps everything in balance. The main thing that causes these batteries to catch fire is obviously if you pierce them or throw them on a bonfire, but it's usually people uh, try to overcharge them or don't they don't use the proper charger. They don't balance the cells and the, the batteries start to uh, heat up, get currents flowing where they shouldn't and uh, go into runaway. So those are the things you need to be a little bit careful of. And by the way, you can get um, the uh, balance leads. I've got one uh, here, if I can open up the packet. There you go. You can, you can buy just these uh, balance leads on eBay. They're dirt cheap. So that's what I'm going to do with uh, this uh, battery pack that I'm making here. So I've got all the batteries in there. I'm going to go through and make sure they're all the right way up. I'll, I'll show you how I lay it out in the next video. Put my uh, bus bars on there, my fuse wire. I use fuse wire to connect them together to make sure it doesn't uh, go into runaway and catch fire. And uh, put my uh, balancing lead on there as well to connect it up to the charger. So that's going to be the next uh, video we'll actually start building this and I'll show you the process I go through to build these uh, battery packs. Thank you.